بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك منشر علينا خزان أولومك برحمتك يا أرحم الله We continue our discussion about the life of Imam Hussein uh, So we said that Muawiyah uh, was in power for about 40 years either over uh, Sham only or later over all Muslim territories. His death gave hope to some people that there can be a change. Yazid, soon after the death of Muawiyah, wrote a letter to the governor of Medina, Walid ibn Utbat ibn Abi Sufyan. Utba was brother of Muawiyah. So Walid ibn Utba is like cousin of Yazid. So he wrote a letter to Walid ibn Utba and there are different reports about the content of the letter. Tabari says that Yazid asked him to take bay'ah from Imam Hussein and Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Zubair and pressurized them. According to Ya'qubi ibn A'atham and Kharazmi, Yazid had told Walid that whoever refuses among these three, Imam Hussein, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Zubair, whoever refuses to give bay'ah behead him and send me his head. So in Tabari, it doesn't mention about beheading, but says, you know, pressurize them. But these three sources, Ya'qubi, Ibn Atham, and Kharazmi, they say, he said, behead them. So when he received the letter, he asked uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam to meet him and Imam with some men of Bani Hashim who were uh, you know, prepared and had you know weapons. Uh, went to see the governor, but asked them to stand outside Darul Hukuma and be ready, stand by. If they hear Imam is making a call, they should go to rescue Imam. So there was a s s kind of exchange between Imam and Walid. And Imam said that according to the instructions by the Prophet, uh, Abu Suf uh, uh, in general, all Abu Sufyan, they cannot rule. And I'm not going to act against the will of the Prophet. So he refused to give bay'ah to Yazid. And Yazid received a letter from the governor and said in response, L write to me who is in agreement with me, who disagrees with me, and send me the head of Hussein. Right from the beginning, he was very harsh. And you should know that this is actually against the advice of Muawiyah. Muawiyah, before he died, when he was on bed, he said to Yazid, I have prepared everything for you and made all Arabs accept you. I am very worried about Hussein ibn Ali, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, and Abdullah ibn Zubair. About these people, poor people, I am worried. Otherwise, everyone is, you know, silenced or, you know, forced to accept or, you know, bribed to accept. Anyway, he has prepared everything. And then he said, among them, Hussein ibn Ali 
uh, has lots of love and respect because he's closer to the Prophet and I don't think people of Iraq are going to abandon him. Try to be moderate with Hussein ibn Ali. This is advice of Muawiyah who was very, you know, much understanding the situation. He was in a clever person, al although in a vicious way he was using his, uh, you know, cleverness. But he was a clever person. He said, you know, just be very moderate and gentle with Hussein ibn Ali. But then he said, for Abdullah ibn Zubair is someone that with all his power like a lion is going to attack you. He's like a fox who is very deceptive and is looking for opportunity. Take him and kill him, you know, make him into pieces. So he gave advice of killing Abdullah ibn Zubair, but he said be very moderate with Hussein ibn Ali. But Yazid didn't listen. So Yazid said to the governor of Medina, send me the head of Hussein. Imam alayhi salam, without giving bay'ah, left Medina and with, you know, some of the Bani Hashim and, you know, brothers, you know, nephews, it's cousins, uh, they left in night Medina. It is said that they were about 21 people and they moved towards Mecca. Before moving towards Mecca, Imam had meeting with some of the men of Bani Hashem, some of the ladies of Bani Hashem, and some of the great companions of the Prophet. And with, you know, sadness, uh, there was a farewell. Uh, this includes two sons of Amir al muminin Muhammad ibn Hanafiyyah and Umar ibn Ali and Lady Umm Salama, wife of the Prophet. So Imam with these people, uh, you know, uh, brought some brothers, some you know, nephews, etc., moved towards Mecca. Abdullah ibn Zubair also before Imam Hussein and without paying uh, bayah, allegiance, he left for Mecca. Imam Hussein alayhi salam arrived on the third of Sha'ban, Mecca on his actual birthday. On his birthday, he arrived in Mecca and he stayed there over four months. First, he entered the house of Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet uh, And people of Mecca used to go in morning, in evening to visit Imam Hussein, grandson of the Prophet but Mecca didn't have history of you know, being Shia or having lots of followers of Ahlul Bayt salam. So they had respect, you know, they had some you know, love uh, for Imam Hussein salam because of being grandson of the Prophet, etc. But they were not as such followers of Imam salam. So Mecca could not be a permanent place. Plus, Imam was worried that um, Yazid may say some people to kill him in this sanctity and sanctuary of Allah and the honor and sacredness of Mecca can be compromised. On the other hand, people of Kufa, they heard that Muawiyah has died and they wanted to get rid of Bani Umayyah. So they sent uh, invitations to Imam Hussein alayhi uh, salam. Before we move on to the next section, uh, session. We should know that the Shia or some people of Kufa uh, gathered in the house of Suleiman ibn Surad al Khuzai. And Suleiman told them, You are followers Shia of Hussein and his father. If you are sure, it's interesting, he said, If you are sure that you are going to help Hussein and fight his enemies, send him letters. But if you are worried that they, you may not be, you know, strong, don't deceive him by inviting him and don't help him. So they sent letter to, letters, you know, to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to ask him to move to Kufa. 
So it's not that Imam asked them, you know, shall I come? And they said yes. No, they themselves you know, asked Imam to go to Kufa. But unfortunately, other than some of the Shia leaders, some uh, head of tribes and some people who had, you know, some kind of position, they thought this a good opportunity. So they s sent letters to Imam Hussein al -Salam inviting him, but they were not people who were really uh, wholeheartedly uh, Shia and, you know, were not even interested maybe in Imam alayhi salam leadership. People like Hajjar ibn Abjar, Amr ibn Hajjaj, that invited Imam, but they don't have very um, a stable situation. For example, maybe I can read for you something about uh, some of these people. Shabbath ibn Rab'i ibn Hassin Tamimi, who died in the year 70, he was one of the Ashraf, or one of the aristocrats of Kufa. He was one of the opponents of Uthman. In the Battle of Safin, he was one of the commanders in the army of Imam Ali alayhi salam. On the way to Nahrawan, he joined Khawarij. But after Imam Ali's speech, he left Khawarij and joined the army of Amir al Mu'minin in the Battle of Nahrawan. And he became commander of part of the army of Amir al Mu'minin. He was one of the people who offered testimony against Hujr ibn Adi, who was killed by Mawi. He was one of those who wrote letters uh, to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and asked him to move to Medina. But then when Ibn Ziyad took over and you know, became dominant, then he had great role in a scattering people of Kufa around Muslim Ibn Aqil. So by the pressure of Ibn Ziyad, he tried to make people leave Muslim Ibn Aqil. But he was himself uh, someone who invited Imam Hussein. Hajjar Ibn Abjal Ijli also was one of the Ashraf of Kufa. But he wrote a letter to Imam alayhi salam, invited him to Kufa. Unfortunately, when Ibn Ziyad was powerful, he tried to scatter people around Muslim Ibn Aqil. And he became one of the commanders of Umar al Sa'd, although he had invited him. Amr ibn Hajjaj also had written to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to go to Kufa, but on the day of Ashura, he was commander for the right wing of the army of Umar al Sa'd and was responsible for surrounding Sharia -e Furat. So that they have no access to water. So you see how these people first invite him on, and then they become commanders or etc. They helped. So in addition to the Shia leaders, these Ashraf, these people who had, you know, some position, they also wrote letters to Imam Hussein al -Salam and invited him. Imam Hussein al -Salam, because he knew Kufa from the time of his father, so he didn't immediately accept the invitations. He sent Muslim ibn Aqil, who was a very trusted and respected person, and who had about 45 years of age, he sent him as his representative to Kufa. In the fifth, on the 15th of month of Ramadan, of the year 60, 
he departed. He left Imam. And on the 5th of Shawwal, after 20 days, he reached Kufa. From 5th of Shawwal till 9th of Zal Hajjah, for 64 days, he was in Kufa. At some point, 12,000 up to, it is said, 12,000 up to, even they said, 18,000 people give bay'ah to Muslim Ibn Aqil. So, in these 64 days, when he was very much, uh, you know, supported by people, and, you know, people gave bay'ah, and he was at the peak of, you know, power, he wrote letter to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to go quickly to Kufa before things change before Muawiyah and Bani Umayyah you know, make not Muawiyah I mean Umavids Muawiyah was dead before Umavids Yazid etc Umar Saad uh, Abdullah Ibn Ziyad all these people you know making you know, some uh, plots ask Imam to go quickly to Kufa he wrote this letter. 37 days after his arrival in Kufa, 27 days before his martyrdom. And Imam received this letter towards the end of Dhul Qa'dah. Some of the people who were close to Bani Umayyah, like Umar Saad, they wrote to Yazid about the situation. And they said, you know, if you want to save Kufa, send someone strong. To take over because the governor of Kufa was not very strong. So, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, who used to be governor of Basra, Yazid asked him to move to Kufa and take over from the previous governor and sort out things. And Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was a very harsh person. So when he went, things you know started going um, to wrong direction. Muslim Ibn Aqil, who was staying in the house of Mukhtar, realized that he has to do something before things go out of control. So. Uh, what I said was that, uh, per advice of Omar Assad and some other people, that you know Kufa is going to collapse and you have to send someone strong. Yazid sent Abdullah ibn Ziyad, who was a governor of Basra. He was a very harsh person. He started, you know, making things uh, worse, you know, day by day. Muslim who used Muslim Ibn Aqil who used to be in the house of Mukhtar Thaqafi, then he decided to move to the house of Han Ibn Orve because pressure was being put on the you know key figures of Kufa. And they tried now to keep meetings and you know visits uh, secret. So, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad tried to do different things. One was that to threaten the key figures and head of the tribes. The second was to check and you know investigate all the houses of Kufa one by one to find out where is Muslim ibn Aqil. So finally, with the help of one of the spies, found that he is in the house of uh, Han ibn Urwe. So he called Han ibn Urwe to Darul Khilafa and, of course, arrested him and took him there. And Muslim ibn Aqil, after arrest of Han ibn Urwe, thought that something must be done quickly. So what he did was that with the helpers that he still had, about it is said 4,000 people, they went to 
capture the uh, palace, the Darul Khilafa. And Ubaidullah at that time was not that much powerful. He had only 30 guards and there were 20 of key figures of Kufa there for a meeting. But he had only 30 guards. These people were 4,000 people. According to Tazkiratul Khabas, when the palace or Qasrul Khilafa was, you know, Darul Khilafa was surrounded, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad told to the leaders of Kufa and, you know, head uh, and figures, you know, key figures of Kufa that either I'm going to kill you, behead you, or you have to uh, speak to your people and ask them to leave. Because um, among these 4,000 people, some people, for example, were from this tribe, some people, another tribe, from this group, that group. So from uh, the maybe balcony or, you know, windows, whatever, you know, on the roof of the Darul Khilafah, they started talking to people. So they said, you know, uh, if you don't go away, you know, for example, uh, in future you are going to be uh, facing problem, your uh, income will be stopped, uh, people will, you know, be killed, etc. So they basically managed to uh, spread many people because they were forced themselves, but they didn't unfortunately resist because Omar, uh, sorry, uh, Obedullah Mnaziyad was very weak at that time. Just he had 30 people, 30 guards. So many people left Muslim ibn Aqil and then, as you know, he had to go to different, you know, uh, lanes inside Kufa, not knowing, you know, where to be safe. And a lady called Tawa gave him, you know, refuge. But unfortunately, her son betrayed and introduced uh, the place of uh, Muslim ibn Aqil to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. The same day that Muslim ibn Aqil was killed, Imam Hussein left Mecca towards Kufa. The same day. So therefore, on the way, he received the news of the martyrdom of Muslim ibn Aqil. Ubaidullah knew that some people from Kufa, they want to go and join Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So he tried to block the exits of Kufa, especially the bridges that, you know, people had to use so that no one would join Imam Hussein alayhi salam. After Imam Hussein alayhi salam received the news of uh, martyrdom of Muslim ibn Aqil, he said uh, to his people, to the people who were around him, he gathered them and he said, you see the situation, I believe that they are not going to leave me alone. Whoever wants to leave, you know, they can leave. And some people who had joined Imam Hussein on the way from Mecca towards Kufa, they left. So those were with him from Mecca and only some of them who joined on the way, they remained. Many people left. On the way also Imam Hussein met Zuhair ibn Qayn Rajali and as you know, he was also traveling with his family and in one manzil, one station, he was very, a station place close to the place of a station of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam sent someone and invited him. He was not very willing to go, but with the encouragement of his wife, Daylam or Dalham, he went to visit Imam Hussein alayhi salam and that visit changed him. He went back. He was very worried when he went, but when he went back, he was very happy and joyful and uh, asked uh, his, you know, people to uh, move and join the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. 
Soon after that, Imam was met by army under Khurrab uh, Yazid al Riyahi, who were about 1,000 people. There was a chance that maybe these people are coming from Kufa to help, or maybe they are enemies. So Imam asked that, have you come to help or are you against us? He said, we are against you. But Imam was very kind to, um, to Hur and his army. But Hur said, my duty is to take you to Kufa. Imam didn't accept and said he wants to go back to Hejaz. But Hur said, uh, I don't let you to go to Hejaz. And if you don't want to Kufa, so we choose a third way, something in between. So Imam accepted. When these two armies were together, these two camps, Imam made some sermons, some khutbah, explained why he has gone towards Kufa, about the letters of people from Kufa, about uh, um, condemnation of the Umavid policies, about how dunya has attracted some people, about uh, the rights of Ahlul Bayt salam, and the need for uh, resisting and combating unjust and tyrant uh, you know, rulers. After a few days, a letter came to Hur from Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad to stop Imam Hussein where there is no water and no uh, you know, development, no town, no village, nothing, just in desert, for example, or in the on the plane, in a plane, without water. Imam Hussein asked her to stay in Neynawa, in a village was Neynawa or Ghaveriya, but her didn't accept. So, on Thursday, 2nd of Muharram, year 61 after Hijra, Imam Hussein arrived in Karbala. And Ibn Ziyad when he received the news that some Shia, you know, in one by one, sometime, you know, two in two, three or three, are going towards Hussein ibn Ali, then he started to f force people of Kufa to join his own army. And it is said that the army of Ubaidullah reached 35,000, some people say up to 35,000 people, for a very small group of people. But some of these people didn't want to be involved in killing of Imam, so they ran away. Baladhari says that sometimes Ibn Ziyad, this is also good to know, Baladhari says sometimes Ibn Ziyad was sending a commander with 1,000 people but only 300, 400 people were reaching Karbala because they didn't want to get involved in killing of Imam Hussein. So some people by force got involved or by bribery, etc. But some people also left. The Shia also in the Kufa didn't have leadership. They didn't know what to do. This was a problem which now emerged even more. And they were also afraid of the sword of Ibn Ziyad. So some people stayed at home. Some people just tried to keep distance from killing of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But unfortunately, some people also then had to, or not had to, but decided to join because they were forced to join the army of Ibn Ziyad. From the 7th of Muharram, so they arrived 2nd of Muharram in Karbala. The 7th of Muharram, according to instruction by Ubaidullah, water was denied to the camp of Imam Hussein from 7th of Muharram. Maybe secretly, for example, they could go and take some water, but there was no kind of permissible access to water. Uh, Imam had some discussion, some conversation with Omar Sa'ad, who had uh, become the commander. 
uh, of the army of Ibn Ziyad and was asking to go to Hijaz, return to Hijaz. Basically, he wanted to be outside the, the you know, jurisdiction of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. But there was no benefit. Omar Sa'd on the day of Tasu'a started attacking the camp of Imam, but Imam asked for one day extension, as you know, sent Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. So from morning of the 10th of Muharram, the day of Ashura, they started, you know, attacking Imam Hussein and his camp. Even on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein tried to introduce himself, his family, the reason for going there, and that, you know, he doesn't basically have anything uh, against them, just asking them to leave him and not forcing him to give bay'ah. And unfortunately, they didn't accept. So they s gave Imam two options either to give bay'ah or to be killed. They left no other option for Imam alayhi salam. Imam didn't accept bay'ah because he didn't want to endorse Khilafa of Yazid. So he decided just to uh, resist and save his life as much as possible, but knowing that there is no kind of safe solution here, unfortunately. The brave defense of Imam and his uh, army took some hours, although they were a very big army against them, but from morning of Ashura till afternoon of Ashura, the battle was continuing till they were, uh, you know, martyred. Ibn Sa'd says that after some hours of fighting, no one was daring to kill Imam Hussein alayhi salam, although Imam was, you know, alone, but they were not daring killing Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Dine Wari says Imam Hussein was very much injured and they could kill him because, you know, he was alone, he was, you know, injured, you know, etc. But they were afraid of consequences, you know, how to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to answer the Prophet, you know, the, sh the shame and, you know, guilt was, were so high. So at this time, Shemr shouted at them and said, may your mothers mourn you. Why are you waiting? Kill him. According to Ibn Sa'd, Khuli, and according to Sheikh Mufid, Shemr ibn Zaljoshan, and according to some other sources, Sanan ibn Anas. So one of these three people, they uh, beheaded Imam Sheikh Mufid says that Khuli was not uh, able to do this. He says his hands were shaking. And Shemr told him what has happened to you, and he says that Shemr, uh, he did this. Then they uh, looted Imam's dress. They uh, ten people uh, with their horses, you know, who uh, ran the body. So in a very brutal situation, unfortunately, it's very sad to mention these things, but because it's part of the history and all documented, uh, we need to be honest and mention these things, although it's very painful. So I'm sorry for the pain to your heart. And then they took women and children without any you know, mercy or any concern, any sympathy, through the bodies of the martyrs 
which were in that you know situation and then they took them to Kufa but before taking them to the palace of Ubaidul Amjad they you know took them around in the cities and the lanes of Kufa and Lady Zainab alayha, and Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, they made a very important historical uh, sermons in Kufa. In this way, our discussion about uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam is uh, finishing. I will try to sh share with you the screen, if it's possible, uh, of the movement of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Can you see? Yes, we we can see the screen share. Okay, so unfortunately it's in Farsi. Inshallah for the English uh, version, the book will be translated. You see here, there is Medina. So Medina, can you see the cursor or no? Yes, we can see the, we can see the cursor. Yeah, so 15th of Rajab, Muawiyah died. 28th of Rajab, Imam Hussein left Medina. So, from Medina, he went to all these uh, stations, Manazil, going through Abwa, where the mother of Prophet Lady Amina was, you know, buried to Juhfa and finally Mecca. So third of Sha'ban, he arrived in Mecca. Eighth of Zil Hajj, when is the peak of Hajj, just one day before Arafah, Imam left Mecca. And then He went through these manazil. When he was in Hajj, he sent Qais ibn Musahhar al-Saydawi towards Kufa. And unfortunately, he was arrested and uh, killed by Ibn Ziyad. On the Ninth of Zil Hajjah, Zuhair ibn Qayn, joint Imam, and Imam also received the news of the martyrdom of Muslim ibn Aqil, and he met children of Muslim ibn Aqil. You see where Imam met the army of Hor. In near Jabal Zihasm, and then finally, so instead of going to Kufa, they took him. They didn't. They wanted to take him to Kufa. He didn't want to go to Kufa, so they finally ended in being in Karbala, which is not very far from Kufa. So this gives you an idea about the journey of Imam alayhi salam in these last several months. Inshallah, in the next session, uh, we will talk about Imam Hussein's lifestyle and some of his words of wisdom. And then, inshallah, we study Imam Zainul Abidin's life. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.